Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the chapter called Interests in Real Estate. Uh, we're going to touch a little bit more on some words that we talked about in a previous chapter and redefine some of them because we are talking with each other, remember, and there are going to be some words that we have to understand that we can translate when we hear them. Back to the example that we talked about, like land, when your client, buyer client says, hey, I want to buy land, you understand that they want to buy real property. They want the land, they want the real estate, and they want the rights. So we're going to do that today and talk a little bit more before we actually get into some of the real real estate, the grit and all that, is some more definitions. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are with the interests in real estate. Now, what I want to tell you is if you notice on the notes right here, we're going to start in section three. And if you go into your book, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to jump over to the page uh, 42 in your book and go with that and start right here at what we call the governmental powers, the governmental powers. Now, I told you that this book is great at using these acronyms. The governmental powers, there are four of them, and they are going to spell out the words PETE, P-E-T-E. Now, the reason that we're talking about this in this chapter is the fact that there are going to be words or that I'm going to change for you. So let's talk about the governmental powers. Now, once again, remember, I am a numbers guy, not an artist. So this is our freedom cup of water. And I joked with you guys in a previous chapter where I gave you all of the rights. And then I said the rest of the book, we're going to take them away. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> so the governmental power. You look at this cup of water, and you look at this water, and you go, hey, look, that glass is full. It's really not. There's a little space right up here called the head space, all right? This is, in essence, the governmental powers that we're going to be talking about because nobody gets these rights. These are rights that are taken from you to protect you and protect the health, safety, and welfare of other people, okay? There are four of them. The first one is called the police power. And I told you, you have the right of control. And you go, yay! But then I said, hey, wait a minute. Try turning your house into a toxic waste dump. Zoning is going to have something to say about that. Zoning is a police power. The police power is the power the right of the government maintains to make sure that you use your property so that it doesn't harm another person. What do you think the value of your neighbor's house is going to become if you turn your house into a toxic waste dump? Probably less. Ask it a different way. What do you think the value of your property is going to be if your neighbor decides to open a car lot beside you? Yeah, you're going to be upset. And you're going to look at him and he's going to go, well, I got control, dude. I can do whatever I want. No, that's what th this is. The police power, zoning environmental laws, building codes, all of these are a police power inside of the governmental powers that they can regulate that what you can do or can't do with a certain piece of property because of the health, safety, and welfare of the people. That is called a police power. And I told you it's there on page 42 is where we're starting at. Um, and they have been given that power through what is called the Enabling Acts. Enabling Acts on page 42. That is what the state's authority, through a legislation, allowing these states to 
enact these governmental powers called the police power. That's the first one of the governmental powers. The second one is this thing called eminent domain. Now, I know you have heard of this before. Eminent domain is the right of the government to take property for the betterment of the public. Like, hey, we need a new highway, so we're going to take a highway from the city all the way down to this other city down here, and we need to take all this farmland in between there. It's a school. We need to put a new school in, so they're going to take part of the farmland to build this school in. That is eminent domain. It's the right of the government to take privately owned property for the betterment of the public. Now, how they do that, the process in which they use, is called condemnation. They will condemn the property and take it from the owner. Please do not confuse this. The right to do it is eminent domain. The process by which they do it, that's not a good arrow, is condemnation, all right? Now, let me tell you a little sad story. Way back in 2003, and it spilled to 2004, it may have went into 2005, there was a court case called Kilo versus New London. And what happened was, the city of New London took a bunch of houses along this street, and what they did is they gave that property to another private individual to develop it, claiming that this developer was going to build this big super mall, and that mall would pay more real estate taxes than those houses, and therefore that economic benefit actually was a betterment to the public. That was their claim. So what, what, let me sum that up. They took private property and gave it to another private individual. That is not the definition of eminent domain. It's the right of the government to take property for the betterment of the public. But what they New London claimed was that the betterment came in the form of that private individual paying more taxes, which would give an economic benefit to the public. Well, there was a young lady uh, named Kilo, last name Kilo, who didn't believe that it truly fit eminent domain because they gave it to a private individual. So she sued, and it went all the way to the United States Supreme Court, court case called uh, Kilo versus the city of New London. Who do you think won? You can press the pause and wait if you'd like to look it up. Well, the problem was the city of New London actually won that court case. The United States Supreme Court ruled that that economic benefit did, in fact, benefit the public. And therefore, though that was a just taking of the property through eminent domain. All right. Now, taking is the term that we want to talk about there on page 43. The takings clause is found in the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, which says that the government has the right to take the property for the betterment. Now, there's like the 14th Amendment that talks about you guys shouldn't be deprived of happiness and all of that. So there have been many people that have tried to fight eminent domain. I will tell you that many of them, if not all, have lost. All right. In Indianapolis, there was a situation when the Colts bought a new stadium. They took the property through eminent domain for the stadium. And there was a factory on the southeast corner of this property called the Hearst Bean Factory. Um, they would have lost, but the owner of the Hearst Bean Factory did something ingenious. 
he got the court of public opinion on his side. He actually took it to the press and took it to social media. And eventually the city gave up and let them stay. And that Hearst Bean Factory is actually still sitting technically in the parking lot of the Colt Stadium, uh, not because they actually lost, but because they wanted to save face because the guy was smart enough to, you know, go on public radio shows and talk about it and have interviews with the newspaper and, and post all kinds of stuff and literally just one in the court of public opinion that made everybody on their side, you know, here's the, the little business owner being squashed by the city and the city actually backed off and let him kept keep their property. So where I was going with that is you are going to lose <coughs> through this takings clause that's in the fifth amendment. So I told you the process was called condemnation. They will condemn the property and take it from you. Now, there is a problem with this. There's this thing called inverse condemnation. Inverse condemnation is when a person suffers a benefit but gets no reward from it, all right? So this is kind of hard to do, not here, when we're not uh, in person. So let's see if we can do it on a drawing. Let's talk about an airport runway. Airport one runway. There is the uh, uh, law that says the FAA automatically gets one mile from the center of that runway as their property. And what they would do is they would take houses that would be inside of that one mile so that they would compensate that person. And when your property is taken through eminent domain, you are supposed to get what is called just compensation, right? Actually, the law says that you should not be harmed any more than if you took the property to public uh, sale. So you're supposed to get market value. It's called just compensation. So this person here is well within the one mile. They may not like the fact their house gets taken, but at least they got some compensation for it. Unlike this person whose house is right here. Well, what happens is the FAA walks out and does their mile and says, okay, we stop right here. Do you think the value of that property just got harmed? The answer is most certainly yes. And they did not get paid. This guy here got harmed and he's P PO'd, but at least he got just compensation and gets to go somewhere. This person property wasn't taken but they lost value. That, by definition, is the inverse condemnation. Inverse condemnation. All right? So there could be an inverse condemnation lawsuit brought by the property owner seeking some compensation from that person because they did lose value here but received no benefit. Okay? The third law or the third governmental power, is called taxation. Taxation is the right of the government to charge a fee on property to raise funds to pay for the cost of the government, like the police, the fire, hospitals. Those things are paid for through a taxation of some sort. You know, real estate taxes, income taxes, whatever taxes they are. But it is funds that are raised on property that you own to pay for the government. The third or fourth and final governmental power is this thing called escheat. Escheat. It's pronounced escheat. The way that I look at it is they've escheated you out of it. 
all right? If you have real property and you die with no will, leaving that property to somebody, and you have no findable heirs, heirs, the state or county will take your property from you, from your estate, rather, from you or your estate, and then sell it at a public auction some other time because it can't sit vacant. Somebody's got to keep take care of it. Somebody's got to pay the taxes on it. And if you have died and you have no heirs to claim it and you have no will leaving it anywhere, it can't stay unowned. So the government takes the property through S-cheat. They've S-cheated you out of it is the way to look at it. So what you have now are these four governmental powers that nobody gets. The police power, the eminent domain, taxation, and its cheat. 